Hello everybody, continuing our winning in the closed Sicilian series. Now we're going to look at the move uh, 6 F4 with the continuation from Black E5. In the last um, few videos we looked at the continuation 6 F4 with the follow-up from Black uh, Knight F6. And we saw uh, two uh, really great games. One from uh, Ryshevsky and Korsnoy. And uh, the other from Spassky and Geller. So we saw some really high-level uh, legendary players uh, showing uh, the viability of the system from both sides. Now we're going to look at the move F4 and E5. Um, let's get it on the board. So E4, C5, close Sicilian, Knight C3, Knight C6. G3, G6, all typical stuff. Bishop G2, Bishop G7, D3, D6, and F4, and now there's E5. Uh, if you play the English as white, this will, uh, this will uh, kind of remind you of the Botvinnik system, uh, you know, in reverse. And that's what this is called. This is the uh, Botvinnik system reversed. <laughs> um, and you get a lot of that. If you play the English, you can play the same thing uh, as black. Um, so, as you can see, it's very committal, this move E5, as far as giving up the D5 square. So, it definitely lacks flexibility. But what, what it has is this amazing strength in the center. Right, it's like the stone wall, a stone wall Dutch. Right, it's not flexible, but it's very difficult uh, to break down. So you can see, black has all of this force on the d4 square. Right, so you're not just gonna run through black's position. Okay, now. Some of the drawback to it, besides this uh, inflexibility and giving up the light square, of course, this bishop on uh, g7 is blocked in. But at least, at some point, black may have the option of playing e takes f4 to open up uh, this bishop. All right. So this line that we see on the board uh, actually started in the English opening. So, for instance, after c4, g6, knight c3, bishop, g7, g3, e5, bishop, g2, knight c6, and e4. So, there you have it. All right. So, as always with openings in reverse, is the question comes up, well, now you're getting an extra move, right? You know, can white do anything with that uh, extra move? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes you can't, right? Sometimes having an extra move is worse because you're forced to give away information to the second player, which is black, that you might not want to give up. In other words, you might want black to make a um make his move first, and then you do your move. So sometimes having an extra move can be detrimental, all right? So our first game we're going to look at is... Uh, from 1990, uh, Yuri Balashov, whom we've seen in the earlier videos in the playlist. Yuri Balashov with the white pieces versus uh, Illich with the with the black pieces. So e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, g3, g6. Sorry. <laughs> g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7. D3, D6, F4, E5, and now we see Knight H3 on the board. Again, we had discussed in the earlier videos the move 6, Knight H3, if you've been following along the playlist. So, this move in this particular line is a, a crucial response because Black is playing pretty aggressively here. So, Knight H3... The idea here is just to keep this F line open, right? Black is saying, hey, I don't, uh, white is saying, I don't have time to play knight F3 and then after castle and then sometime clear the F line. He wants to F 
the F um, file will be open immediately uh, for the rook. All right. The second idea, again, by not blocking this, is that you keep the diagonal open, the D1H5 diagonal. So at the right moment, of course, not now, of course, but at the right moment, say this pawn is exchanged, the queen can jump over there. So basically, black is playing pretty straightforward and aggressive, and so white has to kind of meet that uh, aggressiveness. I'm not saying knight f3 is not playable, but it's not doesn't have as much force force so for instance knight f3 knight g e7 castle castle and then you get like this maneuvering maneuvering type of game right so it's definitely playable say so h3 knight d4 g4 f5 uh, what do we got g takes e f takes bishop takes f4 g takes f5 <clears throat> in the game, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole game, but it's more of a, a slower developing game. Knight h3 is more critical. Knight g e7. Castles and castles. All right. Now, <laughs> this is a very natural reply, and this is the reason why this game is included in here. Right? Just castle, you know, it's, it's normal, right? Especially if you're playing, you're not familiar. It's black. You just castle. The better move after white castles is to play knight d4. Claim this square, right, that you worked so hard to um, fortify. Right, delay this option right here. Let's see what happens. So castle from black. Okay. And what I like about it is the move is really like you know, it's like it looks like just a stereo you talk about playing by rote, like who went and castle there? If you didn't know any better, you just think like, okay, you just castle castle, I'll you know, I'll move the bishop to d7 later on, you know, whatever, it doesn't seem like this, any big deal, f5, so now you're already threatening f6 with this fork here, okay, now here, we talked about the Botvinnik Sicilian, right, and the English in the closed Sicilian here, right, and so the idea here is, that you're going to use these light squares on e4 and h5 to gain the entry into the black position here. f6 was played. Okay, and of course it's very passive and already black's position is taking a turn for, for the worse. If and this is what we're talking about, this diagonal. If g takes f5, simply e takes f5, and let's say if knight takes f5, queen h5, knight fd4, it's very strong, bishop e4, notice the use of the e4 square and the h5 square, the light squares, Made is threatened. F5. More use of the light squares. Notice. See, there's a price to pay. Right? Yes, you have a strong presence on the dark squares, but the light squares are in trouble. Knight G5. Again, attack on the light squares. H6. Queen. The g6, notice the bishop has this um, square covered. So, capture is forced. So now h takes, queen comes back. And that's just a, a sample of what could happen. That's why that move f5 is very, 
very strong in that position. <clears throat> we just looked at knight takes. Now, if bishop takes, you get the same beat down. Rook takes f5, getting rid of that. Same, same things, bishop e4. And this knight is uh, in trouble, no matter what. Let's just look at, for example, knight f d4 again. Again, same, uh, same themes. Let's look at f5 again. Same, same stuff. Bishop d5 check. All you gotta do is remember the weakness of the light squares, and that will guide you. And you can see the same, the same uh, combination h6 here 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 same thing of course there's some different variations but i just wanted to wanted to show you real quick again the main idea is that black has placed all of these pawns on dark squares so the light squares become uh, vulnerable so without going into a crazy amount of analysis this is why black chose to play f6 right passive but he still lives g4 of course supporting f5 right what else but what it does it allows the queen to go excuse me the um blah the knight on the queen side to go to g3 again thematic Bishop d7. And now knight f2. What does what does knight f2 do? That frees the h pawn to join in. Okay. King h8. And problem is is black is all like tied up. Right? His bishop is terrible. And so he's kind of in the position where He's kind of waiting for the executioner. Now, he's not lost at this moment. But if he doesn't figure it out and try to untangle, he'll be in trouble in a few moves. Meanwhile, white's pieces are easy to place. Knight e2, bishop e8, knight g3. Of course, trying to meet the flank attack in the center. h4. And now what's interesting is that white allows a trade of queens with all of these pieces on the king side. But the interesting part is that even without the queens on the board, white's position is still extremely uh, dominating. So D takes, D takes. And now b6. Yes, simply c3. It takes away the square from the knight. E3. And now rook e1. Okay. So this is a great move right here instead of exchanging rooks and uh, being uh, headed for a draw what he does is he keeps it keeps the rooks on on the board why because all the entry squares are controlled in other words there's no fear about these you know rooks coming down the d file all right so instead of just trading pieces blindly he knows he has a nice space advantage on the king side and now he can continue to work on that but at the same time keeping the rooks on the board instead of just trading uh, blindly h6 g5 h takes h takes f takes bishop takes and now rook d6 and of course, there was the threat of f6, so had to protect against that, right? 
Knight g4 threatening again. And again, even though it's a queenless middle game, you see there's still a great amount of pressure that white is putting on in the position. Now you can see the benefit of preserving the rooks. And now the rooks are ready to swing over. It's more difficult for black to defend. G takes. E takes. Knight D5. Knight E4 hitting the rook. Rook D, D8. And now just Rook H1. King G7. And Bishop H6. And uh, Black uh, resigned. Very, very, very simple game. No way to stop uh, after the King. You know, King goes back. You know, moves like Knight coming in H6 and stuff. So you saw, even with the trade of Queens, uh, powerful... Uh, king side attack in the uh, in the queenless uh, middle game so brilliant uh, game right there and you saw the downside of playing uh, by rote and just the simple move castle right here being met by the powerful move f5 so if anything if you take anything from this game take that move away from it that if you're black you beware of castling right there and correct move is just oops correct move is just shooting with d5 at the castle very difficult um to maintain not saying that black is totally lost but uh you know you're going to be sweating and uh in this type of position right here so that is it for this game um we're going to be looking at a really nice game uh next by uh, boris basky but uh, for this video uh please like and subscribe and um check my links below and uh please donate and uh i'll see you shortly on the next video